Good evening, everybody. Hopefully you can hear me and see me. Uh, my name is James Kent. I am the marketing manager for the MBA program here at China Europe International Business School in Shanghai. Um, I'm delighted to bring the latest installment of our After Work uh, series uh, where we interview uh, international alumni that have graduated from the MBA program over the years. Traditionally, we host this uh, in a nice hotel in, uh, in Puxi or we've done one in Beijing. Um, and we've had alumni that have worked for the likes of Apple, Budweiser, Google, Chanel. Uh, I'm delighted to, to be joined by three more alumni for this session this evening. Uh, obviously, Shanghai being in lockdown at the moment means we have to bring this session digitally. Um, but hopefully, wherever you are in the world, uh, you are healthy and, uh, and safe. So what's going to be the agenda tonight? Uh, I'm going to share very briefly, maybe about five minutes about the MBA program. Uh, and then I have a few questions that I will moderate and ask to the uh, alumni that have, uh, that have joined us this evening. Um, after that, we will hand over to, to you guys. So if you have any questions during the session, uh, maybe just to kind of make the most out of the, this evening, if you could put your questions in either the chat box or the Q&A, and we can try and get through as many of these questions uh, as, we, uh, as we go along. Uh, fantastic. Okay, so without further ado, um, this session is a Q&A with MBA uh, alumni, and in the room we have people that are maybe at the very first step of understanding what an MBA is, and we might have other people that have already been admitted to the program or, or plan to apply for our next round, which is uh, which is May 11th. Um, typically, the motivations for, for people to do an MBA, if we zoom right out, uh, it's very much to upskill, to progress your career, to change industry, right? Uh, and also, obviously, the, the salary increase has, a, you know, has a, um, a big impact on this as well. And you can see this, uh, this small graph by uh, QS, uh, who run uh, MBA tours throughout the world, in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. Um, sadly, my career and salary progression is on the blue line. Uh, the alumni that I'm joined with, they're more like the, the red line, and, and hopefully that will be uh, you as well in the, in the future. Um, but obviously, there are places all over the world that you can do an MBA program. So, you know, what's special about our school? So we are China Europe International Business School. We're not a Chinese university. We're a business school that was set up as a joint venture between the Chinese government and the European Union uh, in 1994. And we have five campuses across the world, uh, including three in China uh, and also our European campus in Zurich and our African campus in, uh, in Accra in, in Ghana. The MBA program in particular uh, is a full-time program uh, taught uh, predominantly at our campus, beautiful campus in, in Shanghai. It's a 16-month program. Uh, it's very highly accredited uh, by rankings such as the Financial Times, Bloomberg and Forbes. Um, and it's a complete English, uh, English language program. Uh, the faculty that you would uh, that you would meet along your journey uh, include over 70 full-time professors that live right here in, in Shanghai. 60% um, of them or around that are internationals and they are internationals here um, in China for the same reason as I'm here and also our alumni panel and I imagine a lot of the people uh, in the audience are as, uh, as well. Um, so again, very international school but very strong in terms of delivering that China knowledge and experience. The MBA program, uh, typically we have an intake of 150 students per year. Um, minimum work experience is around two years. Maximum is probably about 10, 11. Um, but on average, we, people have about six years work experience. But as you can see by the figures here, it's very international. Um, usually over a third of participants are from overseas. And actually this year was the first time that we had gender parity in terms of males and females on the, on the program. I'm going to go through this super quickly, um, but I can answer questions at the end and hopefully our alumni can talk a little bit about it. Um, but typically with our MBA program, it's really broken down into three chunks. So the, the first third of the program is very much when we take a deep dive in terms of the academics. So it's a very rigorous program. Everybody does leadership. Everybody does marketing. Um, everybody does financial accounting, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So any of the other top MBA programs in the world are likely to have a very similar kind of start of the academic journey. 
then in the middle of the program it's where it becomes a bit more flexible a bit more customized based on your needs so we actually break out of campus a lot um, you go to different parts of china to do electives you could go up to the gobi desert to do a leadership camp you could go down to shenzhen to learn about the the tech center and actually our students go often to, to visit tencent a uh, company that uh, that june works for uh, and there's also the option uh, to go on exchange during this middle part of the of the journey. Um, and then the final third of the program is where it's a little bit more down to business in terms of your career goals, right? So landing that job that you're looking for after the MBA program. So it's a bit more light in terms of academics to give you really the chance to focus on building your network and focus on uh, meeting the people that you need to meet to try and kind of uh, get that career uh, step up that you're that you're looking for. Uh, actually, a big part of the program um, that's a compulsory part is the Integrated China Strategy Project. Uh, so the ICSP is a really neat part of the, the program. Uh, it's where the students form consulting teams and they go into multinational companies or large Chinese companies and they're given uh, a strategic problem to, uh, to face. Okay, So typically, uh, this could be maybe a market entry strategy or it could be um, to respond to a change in the, the China marketplace. Um, and it's a really great way if people are looking to change industry or function uh, or location to really kind of get experience within the company and to put to, to, into practice some of the, the lessons from the MBA classroom. And this is also done with a professor that acts as a mentor um, and then you meet with high level people from the company over this uh, three month period. Uh, I mentioned very quickly that there's the opportunity to go on exchange. So typically people do 12 months in Shanghai. Uh, and then if they want to, there are places in North America at schools like NYU Stern, Wharton, Kellogg, Chicago Booth. Or you could go to Europe to the likes of INSEAD, London Business School, ESA, HEC Paris. Uh, or you can stay in Asia. Uh, fantastic schools um, you know in neighboring Hong Kong in Japan in Singapore um, we're not short of, uh, of, uh, of options and typically then people come back to really focus on their career journey and that's what I mentioned just now right um, you know a lot of people come into the MBA to really step up in their in their career as well as expanding their knowledge and, and network so to help you on the career side you're not on your own uh, we have a dedicated career development center uh, where we have 10 consultants that work in different industry verticals, right? Um, and they're the ones that are responsible for bringing these companies and more uh, to campus um, to introduce MBA opportunities and to really share what they're looking for. So I hope you get a, a hint of this uh, this evening. Um, but again, we can go into more details about the service they provide during the Q&A section. Um, obviously, some people do the MBA because they want to leave the corporate world behind and maybe uh, set up their own enterprise. And for that, we have our very own uh, entrepreneurship incubator called the, the eLab. Um, just to wrap up my side of the presentation, I'm going to try and do this within 10 minutes, which will be a record. Um, if you are interested in applying for the MBA program, you can speak to myself or my colleagues in the admissions of the team. But typically, you need to apply online. Uh, you need to complete three or four option, uh, three or four essays, including the optional video essay, and then you need to sit the exam called the GMAT, or we actually have the option of our own in-house uh, CEVES admission test for you to, to take. Um, typically, uh, if you're looking to join the MBA program this year, you would begin in October and we have one more application deadline coming in uh, in May time. Okay. And if you are looking for support in terms of uh, studying the MBA program, uh, typically over a third of our students get financial aid, and this can fund um, up to over 50% uh, of, the, of the program. And maybe some of our alumni tonight will give us some tips as well. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop sharing my PPT here so we get the, uh, the full impact of our, our beautiful alumni here. Um, and I'm just going to, you know, kick things off and just ask them, the alumni, to introduce themselves. So why don't we do uh, ladies first? So June, uh, maybe if you can briefly introduce yourself to the audience. Um, tell us a bit about yourself. What were you doing before the MBA? Why did you decide to do the MBA? And uh, what are you doing now? Okay, great. Thank you, Jimmy. Um, that was a great presentation that sort of brought me back onto campus as well, seeing um, the nice buildings and stuff. Um, so my name is June, um, originally from Taipei, Taiwan, um, grew up in Sydney, Australia. So I do represent um, probably both the Asian and sort of Pacific Asian side of the world. Um, so prior to CEEBS MBA, uh, 
um, I was doing, I was working as an international market um, sort of management trainee for ASUS laptops, ASUS computers. So I was in charge of the Singaporean Southeast Asian and uh, NZ markets um, as an expat for about five years. Um, so that's what I did straight after my graduation um, in university in Taiwan. So um, during those five years, um, I was clear about what I wanted to do um, eventually, um, which was I wanted to change, first of all, my, my industry. So from hardware tech to more on the entertainment or cultural side of the internet world. Um, secondly was to change my region from um, SEA or um, Australia or New Zealand back to um, sort of on the mainland China, Asian side of the world. And thirdly, I wanted to change my function from more of a sales and marketing to more of a um, consulting or internal um, consulting kind of role. So I chose CIBS um, on top of any other um, US or European MBAs because I knew straight up that I wanted something top in Asia and I wanted to experience what it was like to live in mainland China, which I've never done before. Uh, and I'm very, very grateful for um, this choice. So um, luckily I got a scholarship and I spent um, two years from 2020 to, um, so, sorry, from 2018, um, August to 2020, um, April. So currently I work as a business um, analyst in Tencent Games for Timmy Studios. So for anyone that plays mobile games in China, um, that's the creator of Wonder Rongyao, or Call of Duty mobile games, um, if you're familiar with that in um, North America. So what I do now is basically I do um, strategy internally and some games operations. And CIBS has been a great choice for me. So I've um, based in both Shanghai and Shenzhen. So I did another internship um, before my full time at Tencent at ITE, which was in Beijing. So SIPs really helped me to sort of integrate into the Chinese community uh, in terms of getting friends in terms of these local networks in all of these top tier cities in China. So thank you, that's about me. Excellent, thank you. Uh, thank you, June. Uh, maybe Andrew, we, uh, we come to you next. Yeah, sure, thank you, Jimmy. Uh, well, yeah, uh, good evening, everyone. It's a pleasure to uh, spend this evening with you guys. And my name is Andrew. Uh, I currently work in the Coca-Cola company as the director of digital business and partnerships. Uh, I graduated from Steve's MBA program uh, five years ago. And actually right after graduation, I joined the strategy consulting uh, industry and uh, worked there for four years uh, in the consumer goods and retail area. And after these four years, uh, actually just one year ago, I decided to uh, go back to the corporate world to you know, really uh, you know, get things down, not only, you know, developing the corporate strategy for the, for, for our clients. So in actually before MBA, uh, I also have four years of working experience, uh, working as a management trainee in an American e-commerce company, uh, in the digital marketing and e-commerce operation field. Yeah. I think that's pretty much about myself. Excellent. Thank you, Andrew, and thanks for being with us uh, to, to tonight. Uh, Vineet, uh, over to you. Yeah, sure. Uh, thanks, James, for inviting me here. It is nice to meet all of you online. My name is Vineet. I am working as Chief of Staff to Global VP, and I'm with Shami. With Shami. I'm based in Beijing. My main role is to make this guy more efficient, and also I lead some of the special project. So before MBA, I used to work as a shift in charge. The, and I was working in MICE. There I was, uh, I was leading the team and working mainly on operation side. But after working for six years, I realized that my learning got stagnant. In order to first start my career and my learning, I came to China to do my MBA. And that time, China has been growing very fast. So I thought it would provide a lot of opportunity for my career. And, uh, and uh, SIPS was located in Shanghai and uh, it was highly ranked quality of the professor is fantastic. I heard a lot of good things about SIPS. I talked with a lot of alumni and heard a lot of good things. So finally, I made a decision to come to SIPS to do my MBA. And it was a fantastic experience. And, uh, and uh, after MBA, then uh, I joined one uh, French company, Schneider Electric. There I was working mainly in project management. So worked there for six years. Recently, I joined uh, Xiaomi. 
more as chief of staff to a global VP. So here I am, so main role is to make this guy more efficient. So, so it means uh, how I make him more efficient. More, I work more as a trusted advisor, helping, in, helping him with reviews, striking, managing multi-stakeholders, all the managing relationship, aligning all the priorities or et cetera. And secondly, I am also supporting some other special project. So for example, recently I worked on uh, leading, uh, organizing the workshop for the, uh, defining three-year strategy for the company. So for that, uh, it is it means we need to take the back seat and uh, start, uh, from day-to-day -day work and uh, align what will be the roadmap for next three years. So we define all the business uh, business goals, the financial goal, and the core competency, which will help us to differentiate with our competitors. And uh, after another project we also worked on because if in digital side, so in digital, if you see China is a leading player. So we, we compare the competency means capabilities in India and China and see the, we find a lot of gap. So how can we leverage the rich features available in China in order to miss in order to also miss uh, in order to take the benefit Right. So that's, that's it. Thank you, Vineet. And, you know, the one thing that kind of shines through with, with everybody here, I guess, the kind of the focus on strategy and, and digital, uh, which which may come up uh, later in the, the discussion uh, tonight. Um, you know, next, uh, I'd like to, to know a little bit about from from each of you. And I think, Andrew, I'm going to pick on you first. How is the, the MBA perceived at, at Coca-Cola? Right. If you can maybe share. Uh, you know, do they only look for MBAs for certain roles or are you in, you know, similar positions, maybe people that don't have an MBA? Uh, I guess this is a roundabout way of saying kind of, is it, is it necessary to, you know, to, to have an MBA or what, what advantage do you think it gives you kind of working for a, a, a global multinational such as Coca-Cola? Yeah, uh, well, yeah, thanks for the question. Yeah, I think, uh, first of all, I don't think MBA is necessary, you know, to do my job at Coke. Uh, well, but I can say is MBA is definitely preferred and the quality of a, you know, typical M uh, CIPS MBA student are definitely the quality that, you know, employers, recruiters appreciate, you know, so the, the proactiveness, you know, hardworking, broad, you know, uh, the brass of business knowledge that we have. So th those kind of qualities is definitely, you know, uh, things that, you know, our company uh, appreciate. And I think, uh, but for my previous employer, which is a consulting firm, uh, OCNC Strategy Consultants, actually, uh, we all know that, you know, if you, uh, if you already graduated from college, you know, after bachelor or master, the, the opportunity for you to join a strategy consulting firm, it's uh, not very easy to be honest, right? It's, it's low, but if you have an MBA, and you are an MBA candidate, then basically all the strategy consultant firms are willing to give, you know, our students, CIP students, opportunity to interview. So that's basically, you know, uh, it's a huge, huge advantage for me when I was an MBA candidate. Yep. Excellent. Uh, excellent. Thanks, Andrew. Uh, maybe Vineet will we'll come to you next. Okay. So maybe I echo what Andrew just mentioned. Also, it is not necessary in my company, but definitely it is seen in positive light. Because why it is seen in positive light? Because the MBA graduate bring a lot of this well-rounded business understanding to an organization and the strategic thinking, which help them to perform well in well in the company. Because do, what happened during because the core concept uh, that we learned during MBA, such as accounting, finance, uh, supply chain, marketing, or process, all of these makes us uh, become strategic thinker and a decision maker in an organization. So, because if if is considered in an organization, if we take a decision in any part of the organization, it has impact in other part. So we understand how to how to tie up everything together. What is the impact on other side of the organization? So, for example, if there is a market campaign uh, promoting a product, in, and uh, definitely once there is a marketing campaign, it will bring additional volume. Then it will it can stretch the supply chain. So it means even if there is a market campaign, it can miss a lot of activity needs to be done at uh, means in different part of the organization. 
So it can stress the supply chain. If it is not done well, maybe they, we are not able to fulfill the requirement of the customer. It, and as a result, they are not happy and can cancel the order. So we need to have a strategic thinking. So definitely Xiaomi see them as a posit positively because uh, we bring uh, all those uh, means a well-rounded business education to the table. Secondly, we, we also have uh, means uh, we know how to diagnose the problem how to break down the problem because in our MBS school, we work on a lot of business cases, which is the real world cases. So during that, maybe professor work more as a facilitator and let the class to discuss, debate and come up with some logical conclusion, evidence-based solution. So that we will learn how to approach the problem. So considering all this, I think uh, it is uh, well recognized in our company. Uh, thank you, Vinny. I, I really appreciate that example that I will be uh, putting in my pocket and using in, uh, in future chats with uh, candidates. So I appreciate that practical example. Uh, June, uh, maybe if you could kind of wrap up that, that question about the, the perception okay. of MBA in Tencent Games. Okay, so uh, maybe I would look at this question from an overall internet industry perspective. So to be honest, um, if I don't know how familiar you guys are with the Chinese indus um, internet industry. So um, it's been growing crazy rapidly in the past um, 10, 15 years or so. So overall um, for the internet industry, I wouldn't say MBA is a must for all functions because there are lots of um, functions like R&D operations, sales and marketing and business development and so on. So um, it's not necessarily because China is such a different market to everywhere else in the world, to be frank. But I would say definitely for the, the BATs, um, the Baidu's, Tencent, Alibaba or ByteDance, um, MBA is definitely a great plus. Um, so there are several reasons. First of all, um, MBAs can work for the supporting functions like internal strategy department, which is a similar um, position I have now, or they could work for investment departments uh, or work for very, very high level man management supporting functions um, in these big internet industry companies. Um, and all of these companies have such a panel or a council or department, which is consisted of the world top MBAs from SEEPS, from INSEAD, from the ones in North America also, um, and they are very, very um, appreciated, I would say internally. So, um, so that's from the demand side. And also from our day-to-day -day job, um, I would say pretty much what we do here at Tencent at Gaming, um, we tackled issues um, that need MBA expertise very much every day. For example, um, when we come to a market entry problem, do we launch um, a new game? or a new genre uh, in Chinese or North American market? Do we adapt a new way of marketing or do we need to sort of transform our internal organization and so on? So all of these new questions um, we tackle are very, very new because these companies themselves are quite young for the internet industry. And they do need to have some sort of um, successful case um, references from other industries or from other companies um, to look to, to look out for. So I'll say that's where MBAs comes in. And also here at Tencent, at Tencent Gaming, um, we do have a lot of SEEPS alumni as well um, internally. So um, I was hired by um, an MBA, I think 20, uh, 2009 graduate. Um, he was a director when I joined Tencent and now he's a GM. And we do have MBA interns every year in our department and in across Tencent Games and across Tencent as well. So I'll say it's pretty much appreciated in, in China doing big companies. Excellent. Thank you, June. I really appreciate that. Uh, June, maybe I, I stay with you if that's okay um, for the next question. So, you know, you kind of, I guess, share the bill about this in your previous answer, but the MBA from an academic perspective, it does give you kind of a broad, you know, knowledge base, right? Every, you do leadership classes, you do accounting, you do economics, marketing, et cetera, et cetera. Is there, you know, one particular course that, you know, you found was, you know, to your day-to-day -day job, the most impactful? Um, and if it, if it wasn't, a, you know, if it wasn't an academic course, then maybe a, another resource, or you mentioned kind of the alumni network. Uh, is there one thing you can point your finger on in terms of being most impactful as in takeaway from the program? 
Okay, thank you, Jimmy. I'm not sure, uh, is my connection okay? Because I'm yeah. kind of um, lagging here for internet. Okay, so I would say definitely um, for me, myself, um, I would say the alumni network is the biggest help for me in the past um, three and a half years in China. So as I mentioned, I moved from, um, I changed basically industry, region and function, um, all three dimensions post MBA. So um, this SIPS network really helped me to integrate into these three dimensions um, all together. So first of all, um, first keyword would be friendship, definitely, because I made so many um, Shanghainese and uh, other Chinese city friends and also international friends here at SIPS. Um, and for those of you who are thinking of uh, joining from overseas or you are an overseas um, expat living in Shanghai or in China, I think it's a great opportunity for you to meet the people who are um, who do have a lot in common with you, um, be as the international background or um, your industry. But at the same time, they have much more experience living in China and they have exposure in different industries. And these are the kind of friends um, I still keep contact with every day now after um, two years after graduation. Um, and the second thing would be uh, mentors and all the alumni networks. Um, so I really um, got a lot of help from my mentors and alumni network uh, during my MBAs because I knew that I didn't want to um, look out for a finance job or a pharma job like a lot of people do here at SIPS. I was pretty sure that I wanted to go into um, entertainment and media industry when I was in SIPS. So I reached out to some of our mentors who was doing investment in um, entertainment. Uh, we had a Taiwanese mentor um, who was one of the founding teams of, of Xinlang. Of Xin so they gave me a lot of precious advice. Like I would say, um, for each of them, I got three to five hours of individual mentoring um, every half year or every year. So that was very, very precious. Um, it's like having a, a boss um, during, during school, even better. Um, and also um, after MBA, uh, when I did my internship or my full-time job in Shanghai or in Shenzhen, um, the connection of my, my class and of my um, batches before or after me were really um, the kind of people I I, um, I I enjoy my everyday life with every day. So as soon as we land to say Shenzhen on my first week, I will reach out to all of our alumni and my classmates in Shenzhen, and they are in different industries. Like now in Shenzhen, we have um, we used to have three in Tencent, but two of them moved on to Tencent Singapore and one to another gaming company. Uh, we had five classmates in uh, working for um, Walmart um, and who are based in Shenzhen. And we had, I think, two or three in Amazon. We had uh, one or two for Vivo and Opal. And we have, so that's just for my batch in Shenzhen. So we already have a very strong technology slash internet community for our batch in Shenzhen, so not to mention um, the batch before or after us. So I think, um, from now, so even nowadays, I still chat with my SIP friends or my, or my mentors and alumni every day. So that's really what I got the most help from at SIPs. Yeah. Thank that's, you. That's that's great, June. Thanks for thanks for your answer. Uh, maybe maybe Andrew, uh, what about about you? Maybe on the, the the academic side of things, what's been the most valuable uh, so far to your day to day? Would you say? Mm, okay. Well, I think the breadth of our you know academic curriculum has been extremely helpful for me to be honest because uh especially when i work in consulting you know because we need to work for different type of clients different type of company industry and different topics like you know organization restructure marketing strategy new product development strategy, channel strategy, and all these different topics basically are covered in, my, in our curriculum, right? We have uh, corresponding courses for that specific scene. Well, it's not like you know, you, you, you've taken the course and you are the master of brand management or marketing management. It's not like that, but basically, but the most helpful for me is that it provide me with a very, you know, those fundamental frameworks and, you know, the thinking frames to think about these questions and the basic knowledge we have to understand this different topic. So I think that that for me was a, 
huge, huge advantage, uh, especially when I work in consulting. And I think that's the probably the reason why, you know, strategy consulting firms, they like MBAs so much, right? Uh, basically, there are the two major sources for consulting. One is from bachelor and master, but basically we take babies, you know, white papers to and train them for a few years. And the second choice we have is to take MBAs because though basically the MBAs are, are the master of, you know, all different business topics. So they pick up things really quick. They, are, they have very good people skills. So I think that was a huge edge for me. And especially when I, you know, well, when you have a degree like a de MBA degree from a school like Sieves, it really helped me, you know, open a lot of doors, especially in the professional service area. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, Vinit, uh, how about you? Yeah. For my career, few courses such as project management, supply chain, finance, leadership really helped me a lot. Because after MBA, I joined a, a French company, Schneider Electric, so which is a which is a leader in electric management and automation. And uh, also recently, I joined Xiaomi and work as chief of staff. So here I joined uh, means I joined all sort of functional meeting, from marketing of operation, customer care, finance. So I'm not uh, like limited to one function now. So I what I can say from MBA, what I learn is the strategic thinking how to work in cross-functional environment, cross-cultural environment, and how to work with different teams. So that helps me to perform in uh, this, uh, earlier with the Schneider, now with Xiaomi. Because I think uh, from uh, while doing MBA, we not only learn uh, academic side, but also soft skill we develop there, like how, uh, well, such as a diplomatic skill, maturity, how to miss a good presentation skills. So it means uh, while working on the project, also we need to sell a lot of things to the leaders so that uh, we can uh, miss, uh, we can uh, get the go ahead. Yeah. Excellent, thank you, Vineet. Uh, I'm gonna ask one more quick uh, question and then I'm gonna hand it over to questions and we've got a, um, a dozen or so in now, which is great to, great to see. Um, so, uh, maybe just to say, so there's a there's an old joke amongst people that work in admissions for MBA that you can always get remarried or have another child, but you can only ever do one MBA in your life, right? It's a it's a big big decision. So maybe you could kind of share with us, you know, how how did you know that you know it was the right time to to do an MBA? I think this will help the audience members out, you know, quite a lot. When do you know that you're that you're ready, or do you think you ever know fully that hundred percent that now's the the time to do the program? Uh, maybe uh, June, we'll come back to you first if that's okay. Okay, sure. Okay, so um, I I'm not sure if I can answer this question very um, in a very systematic way, but I will probably share what I went through before I applied. So I did my um, bachelor's degrees in both um, business and sociology. So you can imagine a lot of people from business department would expect to have an MBA um, three to five years after graduation, and that's what a lot of my um, university. Um, alumni and my work colleagues did. Some of them went to say Harvard, Yale, um, MIT and so on. But I always knew that I wanted something different from them. Um, I didn't expect to have such an um, sort of uh, prestigious, prestigious MBA degree from North America. I knew that's not the thing for me because I grew up in Australia already and I didn't want the experience living in North America and I knew China was a booming trend and wanted to have that experience living in mainland China. Um, and plus um, of my background, of course. So I always had the idea of moving or working in mainland China, but I just wasn't sure um, how to do it or when to do it. So um, in the fourth or fifth year of my um, first job post university, I started to have that idea. So I think um, it's it's hard to say when you are definitely ready, um, but I think you can always um, ask yourself, what exactly do you want out of an MBA? Because I think a lot of people will want to say um, they want to change up career or they want to, um, I don't know, experience living in a different country or they want to even find a life partner during MBA. Um, that's all very common reasons. And um, that happened to all of my classmates as well. But for myself, I was very clear about the three things I wanted to change, um, which is the region, the, the industry and the function. So I was pretty sure um, those three things I could achieve at least 
one or two um, during my time at SIBS. Um, even if I don't achieve any of those, I was comfortable with um, working with my old job because they would probably take me back anyway um, because I was good or I could always find a job um, elsewhere in Australia or in Taiwan or even in mainland in the technology world. So um, I was comfortable with um, risking this one or two years of my life. Um, I had enough fun to, to go through that and I had enough passion to explore China and I could sort of afford the risk or there was no risk because the worst thing is you go back to your old job and um, you spend some happy time with a new, your new friends. So that's what I went through. And I always worked towards my three things during MBA. And luckily I achieved basically all three of them. So I think um, as long as you're clear about what you want to achieve um, and you don't blame yourself, um, I think you're ready. Excellent. Thanks, sir. Thanks, June. So, you know, having one person achieve the MBA triple jump, I'm now going to come to Vineet, who I, I believe was the same, right? Changing location, uh, kind of industry uh, and function. Uh, maybe you can share a little bit about uh, how you knew you were ready to do an MBA. You are asking me, James? Uh, sorry. So how did you know when the when the time was right to do an MBA? Okay, so I just give a little bit background because before MBA I was working in mines. So there I worked for almost six years on production side and uh, I was leading a team. But after working for six years, I re realized that my learning got stagnant and uh, I was not able to learn much. And uh, in the place where I was working, people are most, people are mostly semi-educated because the mines is mostly an isolated area. So there was no computer as such. Also, so all technology are new, new for that area. So that time, I, and also I realized that I was lacking business understanding. So in order to first start my career uh, and uh, to get uh, more uh, general management misunderstanding, I came to China to do my MBA. So, and also because of, I was uh, discussing with a lot of my bachelor's alumni and they gave me a lot of feedback so what kind of career will be suitable? Because like June men mentioned about, I think he, she mentioned about for ch changing the function, reason and industry. So I also had the similar expectation. So what, uh, means which course will really help me to have this kind of big uh, drastic change? So later on, I narrowed down on, means zero down on uh, MBA. Excellent, uh, great, thank you. And uh, Andrew, let's uh, let's finish with you, uh, and then we'll we'll hand over to take some questions from the participants. Yeah, sure. Uh, well, the question is, uh, when I, why I knew it, it was the right time to do an MBA. I think right. for me is that uh, when whenever you decided to make a major life decision, it's usually because you are not happy. And at the time, I was not happy with my career uh, for a few things. Uh, I was not happy with my development. Uh, I was working in a big comp, the big corporate in, in Los Angeles in the you know, United States. And I feel like that I, was, I wasn't growing fast enough and the, the job was not challenging. And you know, I can finish the job in three hours if you are efficient. So the growth was not involved, but my peers, you know, my, my, my friends in, in, in China uh, are definitely growing faster than me. So I need to uh, get back to China. I cannot no longer stay in, in LA. And number two, I think I was not happy about my salary. You know, uh, well, we, we all know that, you know, the average salary increase at all of SIPs is, you know, roughly 100%, right? And that's what the average student can achieve. So I was definitely not happy with my salary in the States. So, uh, and I think these two reasons are, are enough for me to, 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 to decide to quit and do an MBA. Yep. Excellent. Three very, very different answers, but uh, very valid answers. Thank you very much. Uh, right. We're going to try and go quite uh, rapid fire through these Q&A questions as we're a little bit over time. Um, I'll go through the, the Q&A box as there's uh, there's some in the chat. I'm just going to clear those first uh, question to Andrew from Haixing. Are you based in China after graduating? Uh, yes, I believe that was the, 
the case right previously at the consultancy and yeah and now for coca-cola and did all the alumni yeah. attend the full-time program yes everybody here graduated uh from the full-time uh, mba um okay now liam uh, perez uh, how's everybody's mandarin and how important is it to get jobs in china especially immediately after cibs um i'm going to go out on a limb and say that maybe andrew and june speak uh you know very very uh, high standard of uh of mandarin uh Vineet, I, i'm guessing you're kind of just behind them in that in that list um so maybe if we we go with you with that question um and i might be completely off with this by the way but uh you know for you how, how important was the the mandarin skills uh, and any advice for for liam yeah because in my case anyway like you mentioned i'm behind the curve so my mandarin is not that uh, good actually and it's a pity i also want to improve my chinese so having said that i think uh, i think chinese proficiency is quite critical in china in order to get a good job or to perform well in the company but it's it it also depends on the job but it's not necessary like in my case i previously i was working with a french company there i was working more on international projects so in operation side it's that time and after that i now i joined uh, uh, like shami as chief of staff so here i am focusing more on international market including india so i but uh, my suggestion is like uh, still uh, better to work on chinese because it help you to build a good net means a good relationship with uh, all the chinese uh, colleagues in company and that really helps excellent uh thanks and we'll make come back to to the others with any insights on that once we've uh, cleared the the other questions uh so carl asks uh, what will the MBA candidate's advantage be compared to the like an original employee cultivated purely at the company or in the enterprise world? I, I wonder, Andrew, you were saying a little bit about, I think, the consultancy industry, right? And saying that they either hire babies and kind of train them up internally or, you know, or bring uh, MBAs in. Could you elaborate on that? I mean, you know, what else? You know, maybe dig a bit deeper in terms of what is the value of an MBA to that company compared to homegrown talent? Let's put it that way. Okay, yeah. Well, uh, if just talk about strategy consulting industry, everyone knows that those are the typical two routes, right? One is we, we, we just hire fresh grads, and one is we hire MBA candidates. And there is a 5% or 10% that we hire from you know, industry hire, but still that these are not the typical or major paths, and the chances are not uh, that big, to be honest. And I think the advantage is that because uh, most of the MBA student, you know, at least from our program that we have three or four or five years of working experience, so that means that we are quite professional, you know, uh, quite mature in terms of, you know, handling people and we we're quite, quite already quite professional in terms of, you know, people skills or business skills. And plus, uh, with the two years of you know, those, you know, extensive academic curriculum of uh, all about, you know, those topics about business uh, that this have put, uh, allow us to have a huge edge, you know, uh, compared to the fresh grad. And therefore, you know, usually in consulting, uh, when 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 those company high MBAs they have a higher uh, grade uh, compared to fresh grad. For example, if you are fresh grad, you might be a, just an analyst, but if you join as an MBA, you already be a consultant and associate, and you can uh, already lead some work stream of uh, engagement. Uh, when uh, compared to if you just uh, just graduate from bachelor or master, you can only be an analyst and be part of a, you can only handle some basic, you know, basic works uh, do. So I think that's the difference. Excellent, thank you. Uh, June, I saw you typing. I don't know if you have anything else to add to, to that one. Yep, yep. So um, maybe I could share from um, uh, internet or Chinese, Chinese corporate um, point of view. So, the difference between MBAs and the sort of, um, I'll say, let's say Tencent babies, you get the idea. So compared with those um, who joined Tencent or Alibaba straight after um, uni or, or um, masters, um, MBAs do have the advantage of more exposure and a higher starting point and perhaps better salary. 
and a better starting, let's say, grade um, internally. But there are some disadvantages, um, like you don't, you're not familiar with the internal structures and how things work. And it's definitely a challenge if you're both an MBA and an expat who has never worked in China before. So that's why um, even for myself, so I'm Taiwanese Australian and um, I've worked in Taiwanese company before, but even for myself, there has been many, many challenges um, culturally or in the organization. So it's not, it's not a bad thing, but it's just um, quite different from the things uh, I was used to in, in Australia. And so I think for those of you joining SEEPS or you want to land a big job in a big corporate post MBA and you're an expat, maybe you have to really um, think about um, your fit with the company or with the, the industry or with your own personality, because it's very different from person to person. I've seen a lot of um, expats who are more local than local Shanghainese as well. Yeah. Yeah, indeed, I'd agree with that, uh, June, uh, having met many, and uh, yeah, many of them uh, roam the halls of uh, Seeds as well. Um, the next question is an anonymous one, but it's about scholarship. There's always one scholarship question. Um, maybe for the panel, can you just put your hand up if you uh, were awarded a scholarship to do the program, if you don't mind sharing, that is? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Vineet, no, no, no scholarship? Yeah, no scholarship. No, no, okay, sorry. <laughs> sorry about that in retrospect. Um, right, so maybe, uh, Andrew, you know, was there anything specifically that you, you kind of, you know, planned to, to kind of, or, you know, the way that you approach the interview or application to secure a scholarship or any, any tips in, in that side if, if it's important for an, a prospect when applying? Yeah, uh, I think I got half scholarship of SAVES. I think, uh, the process of, of our school, you know, giving the scholarship is actually quite, it's actually quite fair. Basically, it's a few factors. Correct, correct me if I'm wrong. Number one is basically your academic uh, uh, performance, basically your GPA, your GMAT school, your TOEFL school. So this is very fair, right? And number two is that how is your background uh, before MBA? whether it's uh, you know international background whether you know this you come from you know very interesting industry internet big firms uh, right so this kind of stuff and three i think is basically about the performance and during your interviews whether the you show you know you know uh, you you know what what you're doing you know you have a very you know very structured analytical proactive you know this kind of a uh, uh, qualities during the interview. So, and the fourth is basically about the, the quality of your essay, you know. Uh, so I think the, the process was very super transparent and very fair, to be honest. So as long as you can do well in these different areas, I think it, it will be natural to get a scholarship. Thanks, Andrew. Um, yeah, I, the only thing I'd add to, add to that, I completely agree with everything you're, you're saying. So I'm not on the, the scholarship committee, but the other thing that we, you know, we look to award is not just the, the kind of the academic and uh, performance in the interview, but also obviously diversity is something that we, we look at. And I think the panel touched on this earlier, right, that we want to build the most diverse class as possible so that people are learning from uh, a whole wide range of, uh, of industries and function within the classroom. So if you have a unique, um, kind of skill that you can bring to that classroom dynamic is definitely something to to kind of bring out and try and uh, you know shine a light on during the the, the interview process. Um, the next question I'm going to come to uh, Vinit, I'm going to come to you. So uh, Muzamel asks a very kind of specific question given his background in cybersecurity. So I'm probably not going to focus on on that, but just in terms of kind of landing a job at a, a leading Chinese company, and I'm sure it was. I'm sure it was different than, than Schneider, the, the French company you mentioned beforehand, or, or was it? Was there anything that was, you know, very different that, you know, um, that made you kind of adjust the way you approached uh, the interview to kind of land the job at Xiaomi? Or was it quite similar to landing a job at a multinational company? I think it's not uh, similar because if you consider the job earlier, I was working, it's mainly, mainly linked with the operation side. Now, I, uh, the job I am doing now is not linked with any function in reality. So, but the kind of skill set that we developed during MBA, 
such as how to work with team, how to analyze the things. Because, do, because during our MBA, we also work on a lot of case study. And case study is really, really varied. Means it's not linked with any function. So because uh, teach professors mainly working as facilitator, and then we have a lot of classmates. They are coming from diverse background. They have different functional expertise. So while we discuss, we debate, we analyze a case, so and we come up with solutions. So we analyze a case from different angles, like from finance, marketing, or accounting, etc. So we really try to analyze and synthesize the problem. So I think the the because during MBA we also work on integrated strategy project, where we need to come with with something which is more integrated rather than some functional recommendation. So that really helps. So from that perspective, while I, I because the, there was a lot of questions which is linked with more analytical sides. So I think that really helped me to answer those questions. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Vinny. Um, the next question, I guess, is an anonymous one, but for somebody that I assume has already been admitted into the incoming class. Um, so if we're kind of about, you know, six months or four months away from the start of the program, you know, what can admitted students do, you know, today or in the next few months to really prepare for the, the MBA journey ahead, right? What can they do to kind of get the edge or, you know, give themselves a, a good start for, for, for beginning the program? Um, maybe June, I come to you. Yeah, awesome. So I was actually just typing down my notes for that one because I really like that question. Um, so I've got my three keywords. Um, so the first one is definitely proactive. Um, I'm not sure if the, 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 the one who asked the question is um, based in China or an expat, but I mean, um, to be honest, before I moved to Shanghai, I've always had the stereotype of how competitive it is here in, in China or in, at MBAs in general. Um, and to be honest, I didn't expect, I didn't experience that much of um, competition in my batch. They say 2020 was a very, very happy batch, but I did experience, I was shocked by how proactive these people were. So we had um, a WeChat group of uh, 200 people probably in March. So that was five months prior to um, the opening ceremony. So we had a whole batch chatting online every day before five months beforehand. Um, and people were very, very proactive in organizing um, candidates for the club uh, committees and student president and um, standing up to um, host the TED Talks and all these different cultural nights and stuff. And for myself, I wanted to run a club, but I failed to form a team. But I did organize a lot of um, unofficial events like dress codes for the whole batch and stuff. So that was really fun. So be proactive in class and socially as well. And the second thing is definitely to, to understand others or to be understanding because as an expat, you would experience um, a lot of cultural differences with um, other internationals or the Chinese. Uh, or as a Chinese um, or as a Shanghainese, you would definitely experience many different things um, from the expats as well. So in my experience, 40% um, expat and 60% Chinese, um, there's always that ambiguous line between, but there are always, um, I would say, um, tens of people um, who are traveling across the line. Uh, maybe it's like uh, Asian internationals or or um, very social people. So you have to be very, very understanding to other people, especially now um, post MBA, a lot of people are not used to um, moving to other cities in China or um, maybe experience the Shanghai lockdown. There's a lot of frustration, but if you have that kind of openness or understanding um, built up during MBA and you know about the Chinese society and how it works, you would have a lot more um, comfort during hard times like COVID. And the third thing is to be sober. So not sober in terms of uh, drinking, but sober in terms of your decisions and your actions, because um, I was consciously very, very sober all the time. I didn't drink, um, but I did party and I was sober about my career choices because I wasn't chasing around um, investment opportunities or pharmaceutical or financial or even consulting during my MBA times. Um, unlike a lot of people who joined, say, 
10 clubs at the same time. I was very, very selective. Um, I wanted to spend more time reading or hang out with my friends. Um, and um, I was selective because I knew there are certain things that I can and cannot achieve during and post MBA. So I was, I was pretty sure um, I was never going to be a, a finance industry person. I was probably never going to be a consulting or IB or, or banking person. Um, I did become um, part of the consulting uh, function, but that's because I'm in Tencent and in gaming and that's the industry I like. Um, and that sort of landed um, where I wanted to develop um, my skills as well. I was um, lacking consulting skills before MBA. So um, it's sort of um, a co coincidence. I wasn't... Um, initially looking for consulting or um, uh, such a big corporate, but I landed here and I think it's a um, great opportunity because I was selective and I was not sort of joining events everywhere. But maybe uh, that's an approach for some people and it's a good way to bond and network, but um, you have to be very, very selective um, when you're bonding with people, um, whether it's a mentor or alumni or your classmates. Yeah. Uh, thank you, June. I have fond memories of the different dress code days. I think there was one that everybody was wearing rainbow colors and there was uh, exactly. all the, the different colors coming Dino. in. We had a denim as well, yeah. Yeah, we, uh, we, we missed that. Uh, we should do that again this year. Um, next uh, question I'm going to come to to Yosup Lee, uh, ask if there's any kind of cases specifically of those coming from kind of a family business background. Uh, maybe I'll just take this one quickly. So for family business, um, we have quite a, a strong support structure. Um, first of all, we have the Family Business Club. Uh, we also have a specific uh, elective, we call it a China module that takes place in Ningbo. Um, and this is led by uh, a very good faculty from Singapore called Jean Lee, um, who's head of family business and, and heritage for CEIBS. Uh, so we go there and we go around companies that are in their second, third, fourth uh, generation. Um, and they have meetings with, uh, with different stages of management talking about succession plannings, you know, and I have to say it's quite a popular path of people that are maybe coming from corporate and looking to kind of go back to their family business to, to take over and looking to make the most out of that transition. Um, but uh, what I'll do is share my WeChat at the end of this session, and then I'm happy uh, you're up to, to answer that in a little bit more detail. Um, Andrew, I'll come to you for the next one. Uh, looking back at your time as an MBA student at Sieves, is there anything you wish you could have done differently or that you'd want to improve about the, the program? Okay, yeah. Uh, well, just from my own experience, I think, uh, the one thing I regret is that I didn't spend enough time, you know, having fun uh, during my MBA because I, I spent too much time on, you know, uh, preparing for, you know, interviews, you know, on the career topics and number two on the academic things, especially in the first few terms. I think the first three terms when I was, because I, uh, I wanted to go to LBS for exchange. So therefore I need to spend a lot of time for my you know GPA, so I think that's the thing that I regret a lot. I don't know. I don't regret. I mean, uh, well, I, I should have invest more time uh, on you know having fun, you know, and participating in those you know MBA social activities, which are which should be super fun. But I, I think I miss quite a lot, especially in the first three terms. Yeah. Got it, got it. Uh, thank you, Andrew. Um, I'm just going to take the next one quickly. How old is the right age to do an MBA? I have 14 years work experience. Um, so for us, I mean, from the admission side, you know, we look at that, as I say, minimum two years work experience. You know, we've recruited people that have 14 years, but it's probably very much at the top end of the experience. What we tend to do, people that are kind of at the two ends of the curve, we tend to spend a lot more time with them in the interview and the, the kind of the uh, recruitment process to make sure it's the right fit. Right. Because, you know, although you might be willing to do the program, if you are in, say, a team with maybe people that have kind of two to three years work experience, uh, although you, you're happy at the, the start, it might be that it's not the best um, choice of program for your career. Right. And it's very it's a very kind of personal um, you know, decision uh, and also a fit with the school. Um, so we take it kind of case by case with, uh, with this situation. Um, but the best thing to do is uh, if you reach out to me afterwards, we can put you in touch with somebody who was also the, 
I would say the kind of the, the you know the, the the father of the of the year in terms of having the most experience, um, and or, you know or mother, and um, this would kind of be a, a good way to kind of you know see how they found it and see if it's uh, if it's still going to be the right program for for you. Um, next one, I've heard that recruiting experience for overseas expats can be quite difficult in terms of competing against talent from mainland China. Are there any particular post MBA roles or companies that are better suited to recruiting overseas expats? Um, so my my inclination is to come to Vineet and then maybe if, if Andrew and June want to kind of jump in afterwards, if that's okay, to uh, to answer this one. But Vineet, maybe we, we start with you. I think maybe it is a more difficult, but in reality, I, when I joined MBA, after three months only, I got the internship, after three months. So how it uh, means, uh, what I did, I used to go to all uh, career seminar, or maybe because a lot of company come to see, so I talk with their, like uh, all the management, they come to give their prep talk. And during that prep talk, I also talk with, with them to understand a bit more about the company. Actually, I didn't know anything, so I cannot add value, but at, at least it helps to build the repo. So what happened, we exchanged the card and later on I sent a miss thank you message and later on we just keep in contact. Later on I just asked, to, can I get the internship? So I got the internship three, just three months later. Even I gave the full-time uh, job interview after fourth month. So I think it's just, uh, we need to build a network. You know, I need to talk with a lot of people who are coming there. And secondly, also, because now a lot of Chinese companies, they are also going overseas. And they also have a international experience, it means a inter international market. It's a big market. So I think there we can add more value. So we need to find uh, the areas where we really can add value. So I, it may be difficult, but it's not uh, actually if we do in a right way, I think it's not that difficult. Thank you, Vineet. Um, yeah, I agree with, with that completely. Uh, Andrew or June, is there, you know, even from your experience or even kind of other, say, expats that were, you know, part of your cohort, um, any kind of uh, examples or, or, or tips or uh, kind of feedback to share about that question? Yeah, I, I think I completely agree with Vineet. Uh, well, for, for my batch, uh, I think all of my foreign, you know, international uh, classmate friends got their summer internship. Uh, well, we have, because the school actually, you know, help us to, you know, uh, source a lot of, you know, opportunities from those, whether international or Chinese company, they do require, you know, international students. So summer internship, it's, it's definitely uh, not that difficult. But in terms of uh, full-time job, well, I heard some challenges from my, you know, uh, foreign friends uh, of our batch. I think the main reason is that, well, if you're working for the uh, international business like Vinet, it's completely fine, you know, if you don't speak Mandarin at all, right? That's completely fine, especially when you work for the Europe, SEA, or other markets. But if you intend to work for the China market and focus on the Chinese consumers or the Chinese uh, China Chinese business, then uh, in most of the cases, Mandarin is a is a must, right? But I I, I don't think this is difficult because if let's say me I, I will work in Japan or I work in France, I need to speak right French or Japanese. I think that's very fair. So if you uh, are interested in working for a company uh, and targeted for the Chinese consumers or Chinese co business, then you probably need to uh, speak Mandarin. I think that's the only difference I heard from my international friends who, uh, who are, you know, uh, who are trying to find a job. And other than that, I don't think there's any, you know, uh, disadvantage for ex expat, except for the language part. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, June, anything from your side? Yeah, I think uh, I think uh, Andrew and Vinny covered um, pretty much. But from my batch, I would say um, most of our foreign classmates um, landed on um, both summer interns and full time jobs um, quite well. I would say um, maybe um, if you're interested, we can look for more candidates in um, our batch to answer that question afterwards. 
Sure, absolutely, absolutely. Um, maybe I'm going to try and wrap up in the next uh, next uh, few minutes to finish at, uh, at, at ten past. Uh, Jun, I'm just going to take one of your questions, maybe a, a fun one as well. Did any of our panel yeah. go on exchange during the program, and, and how would you say it kind of added value to your your postgraduate career, uh, or was it okay? Fun. <laughs> uh, the question is about exchange program, right? Right. Okay, uh, to be honest, um, I did land an um, exchange opportunity, but I dropped it and I paid the fine. Uh, and I'll tell you why. Um, I applied for ESA in Spain, um, but that was, um, I was supposed to go on exchange in October 2019, but then um, I finished my internship at Tencent and I, I got an, another opportunity um, to intern at, at ITE in Beijing. So I wanted to explore that different internship opportunity. So um, I dropped the, the exchange, but I know um, in my batch, we got people that went to um, UPenn, Wharton. Uh, they went to, I think, Kellogg, um, Ross um, in London. I think we had a big batch of um, 10 plus 10, so MBA plus Master in Finance in LBS. Um, we had, I think, more than 10 that went to INSEAD. Uh, they landed in Fontainebleau and in Singapore. Um, so I think more than 40 or 45 people went on exchange in my batch. So that was a big batch, and that was before COVID. Um, for myself, even though I didn't go on exchange, um, I did uh, go to as many international modules as possible. So I went to Israel module. Uh, I went to the Accra module in, in Ghana. So that was the, the last international trip we got to do before COVID. And that was very, very fun overseas experience. Excellent. Thanks, June. Uh, Vinito, Andrew, any, any exchange experiences to share? Um, maybe I can go first. Because I didn't go for exchange because I got the internship with Nike because I was doing an internship with Nike at that time and it was more mainly in operations. So because I wanted to make my career in supply chain operations, so I just continue with my internship. But uh, like uh, June mentioned, there are more than 45 or similar in our batch also, a lot of students miss, uh, went for exchange. I think it really helped them because I know some many of them were able to use even in China or outside. Because what helps, uh, because they get some kind of branding. Secondly, because if suppose they are working in a French company and they did internship with uh, maybe US because the, it is a, also well recognized also from INSEAD because and people, especially French company, they know INSEAD very well. So if we someone go to INSEAD and start working with French company, I think that branding really helps over the year. And then also many people you also use uh, career resources. For, uh, in the miss where they did the exchange so from that perspective i think it's a quite useful excellent thank you so so two internships kind of uh yeah um changing plans to go overseas how, how about you andrew did you stay in china as well or did you head out on exchange yeah i also uh, yeah i went to exchange in london uh london business school so i think it's it was a very helpful experience for me uh well uh, number one is that you get to, you know, uh, know about the difference of the, those dif two very good different uh, business school, because at the end of the day, uh, our school SIPs is still a very young business school, right? Only we, we started at early 90s, I guess. But for, for those schools, like, you know, those schools in North America and LBS, they already have more than half a century history. So, you, you, you know, uh some parts they are definitely doing better than us but sometimes they're not so you get to know the uh, compare the you, basically I, I think you you get to have the best of both worlds right because in china you have a, a very good china network and you get to know a lot about the chinese society china business network very very strong where we have a the, the probably the strongest network in China, and but in LBS they're very you know strong in banking, in you know, consulting, academics, those kind of stuff. So I will personally you know definitely recommend to do a stand whether in, in in any school in the world because it, it really can diversify your experience. Excellent, thank you, Andrew. Um, what I'm going to do, guys, just mindful of the of the time now, um, I'm going to ask the alums to maybe kind of share the the final piece of advice or the best piece of advice 
um, to everybody going forwards uh, to, to sign off. Um, I'm also going to put my uh, my WeChat in the in the chat box and any of the questions that we haven't covered this evening. Uh, what I'll do is in endeavor to kind of uh, put those together and then follow up with people via email. So thanks for those who have uh, who have uh, shared questions. I'm sorry to those who we haven't got to your, your questions. Um, maybe so final words of advice uh, or, or thoughts. Uh, June, maybe we start with you, if that's OK. Thank you, Jimmy. So um, my advice is pretty straightforward. Um, if you are interested or if you've been thinking about it for over a few months, you probably want to do it and you probably should do it because you never know um, how much you'll like it until you do it. And once you've joined um, SEEPS or joined any MBA program, I'm pretty sure you'll find something out of it. So if you, are, if you have the thoughts, then this probably means you should do it. Excellent. Uh, very nice. Uh, Andrew, uh, let's come to you next. Well, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I think uh, what I want to say is that I think uh, doing an MBA program is probably one of the best career decisions I have ever made. Uh, in a short term, not only, you know, in terms of, you know, one personal development to, you know, the huge salary increase and and, and three, the prestigious, you know, of this MBA program and not to mention how many opportunities this, you know, this thing helped me open to so many doors for me, right? Is this only in the short term? But in the long term, I think the benefit is that I, I, I'm still expecting to have is that I have a very, very strong, you know, I have very uh, good friends in our batch and in for our school, we have more than probably 20,000 alumni or 30,000 alumni in China. So uh, in a later stage of my career, when I become, uh, you know, those, you know, high ranking executive or I start my own business in China, this uh, this network will be, huge, will be hugely helpful for myself. So I think that's probably one of the best decisions I have made. Yeah. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks, Andrew. And, and please come back and join another panel, uh, as you say, when you're head of Coca-Cola or you have your own uh, own business. Uh, and Vineet, uh, let's uh, let's wrap up with uh, with you. OK, I think uh, it's very important to position uh, correctly in MBA school because uh, it's also depend on what is the choice for post MBA career. So um, because we have a lot of projects, a lot of uh, electives, it's uh, more important to select them more carefully. Uh, so we need to, because I suggest to, to join the seminars, build network, not just focus on academics, because academ academic is just one part of MBA, but uh, we need to go beyond that. And, uh, but MBA really, really helps because it fast track the career and give more structured learning. And uh, even I think uh, networking really helps. Like even now in Xiaomi, my classmate, uh, her name is Anita Chan. She's working, she's uh, uh, working as investor head here. So we meet uh, more often, we meet uh, almost weekly for some coffee or for dinner. So I think it really helps. Uh, so better to build the network. Excellent. Uh, three very nice points to finish on. Um, so for me, uh, it just leads me to say thank you everybody for, for joining us. Uh, best of luck if you uh, are about to start the MBA at Sieves or you'll be applying for the, the next round. Uh, as I said, I put my uh, WeChat in the chat box, feel free to, to reach out. Um, thank you to the three uh, alumni, Andrew, June and Vineet for giving up your evening. Um, for those that are in Shanghai or indeed other cities in China, uh, stay safe. And if you are in lockdown, um, I hope everybody's well and safe and look forward to hopefully meeting, you know, some of you or all of you on uh, campus at Sieves. Uh, have a good evening and, and thanks again. Take care. Bye bye.